I am privileged to be here today at the invitation to make property history. As you know, I've recently acknowledged my retirement from public life and should really not be here. However, as long as poverty, injustice, and gross inequality persist in our world, none of us can truly rest. Moreover, the global campaign for action against poverty represents such a noble cause that we could not decline the invitation. As of poverty and obscene inequality are such scourges of our times in which the world boasts of advances in science and technology and industry and, and wealth accumulation that they have to make aside slavery and apartheid as social ills. against poverty to take its place as a public movement alongside the movement to abolish slavery and the international against apartheid. And I can never thank the people of Britain enough for their support through those days of the struggle against apartheid. Many stood in solidarity with us just a few yards from this spot. Through your will and passion, you assisted in consigning the evil system forever to history. But this new century, millions of people in the world's poorest nations remain in prison enslaved and in chains. They are trapped in the prison of poverty. It is time to set them free. Like slavery and and apartheid. Poverty is not natural. It is man-made and it can be overcome and eradicated by the actions of human beings. And overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity. It is the protection of the fundamental human right to dignity, a decent life. While poverty persists, there is no true freedom. The steps needed from the developed nations are clear. The first is assuring tr trade justice. I have said before that trade justice is truly a meaningful way for developed countries to show com commitment to bringing about an end to global poverty. The second is an end to the debt crisis for, for the poorest countries. The third is to deliver much more aid and make sure it is of the highest quality. 
and 2005, there is a unique opportunity for making an impact. In September, world leaders gather in New York to measure the progress since they made the Millennium Declaration in the year 2000. That declaration promised to have to have the extreme poverty, but at the moment, the promise is falling tragically behind. Those leaders must now honor their promises to the world's poorest citizens. Tomorrow, here in London, the G7 finance ministers can make a significant beginning. I am happy to have been invited with them. The G8 leaders, when they meet in Scotland, have already promised to focus on the issue of poverty, especially in Africa. I say to all those readers, do not look the other way. Do not hesitate. Recognize that the world is hungry for action, not words. Act with courage and vision. I'm proud to wear the symbol of this global call to action in 2005. This white band is for my country. I will give it to, to you, the pe people of Britain, and ask you to take it forward with millions of others to the G8 summit in July. I entrust it to you. I will be watching with anticipation we thank you for coming here. Sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great. You can be that great generation. Of course, the task will not be easy, but not to do this would be a crime against humanity, against which I ask all of humanity now to rise up, make poverty history in 2005. They, then we go stand up, and then we'll all stand with our heads held high. I thank you.